The representative of the Speaker of the House of Representatives, the Governor, I mean the members of the National Assembly here present, members of the Diplomatic Corps, National Security Advisor, Alam Nuri, but Chief of Defense Staff, Service Chiefs, Commandant, Directors and Directing Staff of the College, Senior Government Officials, Graduates and members of their families. The Guest Distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, I am extremely honored to be here at Armed Forces Command and Staff College for the graduation ceremony of Senior Course 45. The Command and Staff College is a bastion of learning and practice that opens the door of promise and future advance to mid-level officers of the armed forces. It, is, it prepares them for the higher responsibility while ensuring the standardization of staff duties and functions throughout Nigerian armed forces. For over 40 years since its establishment, this college has kept faith with excellence in military instruction and preparedness of our officer corps. You, the participants of Senior Course 45, I've kept loyal to this outstanding tradition. We are proud of you for how far you have come, but much like our very nation, you see have far to go and more to prove. On behalf of a grateful nation, Nigeria, I commend you for the service you have provided and for the greater contribution that awaits you in the future. The Armed Forces Command and Staff College has been essential to the Armed Forces of Nigeria, especially in the professionalism and unwavering defense of our national interests exhibited by the graduate of this college. This graduation is certainly an important milestone for the 291 officers graduating today. You have withstood the rigor of 48 challenging weeks of instruction and work again I say to you personally, congratulations.
because of his global renown, this college attracts officers from the armed forces of numerous country and friendly states. Graduating today are students from Asia and our Eastern African nations. Notwithstanding the demand of your training, I hope you have enjoyed our customary Nigerian friendliness as well, because Nigeria is one of the most hospitable countries you can find. We have opened our arms like friends and brothers to you. Your attendance at this college is testimony to our profound belief that national security is not solely achieved through muscle and might, but also in building friendship and alliances based on cooperation, justice, and good governance and mutual respect. As you return home, remember that you always have a home in Nigeria. Here. Yeah. May the ties of brotherhood and peaceful accord always bind our respective nations. To the graduating students, from Nigeria ministries, departments, and agencies, you have warranted the confidence of our respective organizations. The knowledge gained here will prove invaluable in our mission to harmonize all aspects of government, policies, and programs towards the twin national goal of security and national prosperity. Congla congratulations to all of you. I also commend the spouses and families of all the graduates. Without your understanding and support, Today's celebration will not be possible. Thank you. At this moment, please permit me to offer a few comments about the world and the challenges we face. We live in a moment of flux. Your political change is afoot. Old alliances and assumptions are being tested as new ones are being shaped. Trade and global economic activities are fast yet fragile and easily disrupted by war, weather, or pandemic. Underlying it all is the often unspoken but urgent competition for precious resources, water, food, gold, oil, and other items have been placed in the context. In too many instances, the contest turned violent. Areas that should blossom into economic prosperity and hope become factories of pillage and oppression. In Africa, this condition is perhaps our greatest challenge and ashes injustice. Your role in combating this grave evil is crucial. For we call on you to defend not only our land and resources, 
about our people and their democratic assistance. The serious multinational security challenges we face today are symmetric and transnational. Expanding non-state actors stock our continent, searching for nations to plunder and people to oppress. Every day, these malign actors hold sway over even an inch of Africa territory takes us a day further, further away from our intended and best destiny. I mention these things because I know your training here was not all the stuff of abstract and classical instruction. Your training was scripted to fit the imperatives of our times. And I'm grateful that is happening. This new generation of threats demand that African countries work together as never before. In this regard, the multinational collaboration of Nigeria, Cameroon, the Niger Republic, and charge to bring peace to Lake Chad region is an example that must be improved by all means and replica, replicated whenever it's necessary. We must also be brave enough to reform military doctrine and protests. We do not face a confessional army on the traditional field of battle. No, we contend against mobile elusive irregular forces that disdain the normal rule of warfare. We must adjust accordingly to subdue the menace. This shall require a change in mindset, in strategy, in tactics, in equipment, and in gear. But your strategic objective, the democratic tranquility and prosperity of our nation shall never change. As Commander-in-Chief, I have given myself the following charge to deploy the entire machinery of state power to ensure security of our people and property in a just and democratic society. Under my predecessor, the armed forces worked tirelessly towards necessary reform to enhance combat effectiveness and operational capability. We must now pick the pace. My government will provide the necessary support you need. This college is doing its part by upgrading the facility to provide an environment fit for this group. For the purpose, the college's curricula has been sharpened to focus on the critical knowledge and skills. Officers will need to face contemporary national security challenges. This effort sustained the college as a military training institution of excellent reputation. I therefore commend the college board as well as the commander and staff for their achievement to date. My government will continue to support the college by giving due priority to the training and welfare 
of our armed forces. I promise that. <laughs> Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me now return to the graduates we honor today. I leave you with a charge. Much like I give to myself. Your nation has invested in you and your training. Much faith has been placed upon your broad soldiers. Our collective safety rests in your hands. We believe in you because we know you possess the sufficiency of character and skill to see us through challenges. Your graduation today is a call to greater duty for the nation, the nation you love. May you stand brave and unwavering in the discharge of your constitutional responsibilities, and may you always do honor to the sterling name of the Armed Forces Command and Staff College. On this note, I again congratulate the commandant and his team. Also congratulate your families and share in their pride at your successful completion of the senior staff college course. And may I finally say this. Your career will be one of the series of challenges to face and conquer. There will be times that seem daunting. But remember, you are not alone. Some will come but they shall clear and disappear. Remember the faith, love, and gratitude of an entire nation are with you. You are our strong line of defense. Strong line of defense for over 200 million souls. My friends, my dear officers, you are the best of us. Be sure we are with you always. Let us join a singular purpose so that we shall go down in history as ushering our beloved country to this rightful place of peace, prosperity, and justice. Once again, give you my respect. And I show you my unflinching support all the time. Thank you. For I'm just trying to suppress